What's up, YouTube? It's Joe again. How are you guys doing? As you can see, I got a new toy. <laughs> it's my nice little steady cam. <laughs> uh, so, uh, welcome back. I uh, haven't been uh, posting regularly as I wanted to. Uh, so, today is a bit of an update as well. To answer a few questions that I posted online about, you know, things that I can talk about not only about myself or just things that you guys are uh, curious about. So I also wanted to show you today how I made one of these guys here. This one here. So this is uh, like the first time I ever did a DIY. Uh, this is a basketball pot. Uh, right now, don't look at this part. It's really from here downwards. Um, but. I'm going to show you guys how I made this, a uh, very funny story how this all began, but to sum things up, uh, it was just very expensive <laughs> to get it already made. So I'm going to show you guys how I did it, um, and hopefully you guys can enjoy that uh, little tutorial. So uh, here we go, alright? So we before we, before we start. I want, went ahead and bought a indoor basketball net that I found on Facebook Market. Really cheap. Unfortunately, it didn't come with an, its own ball. So I went ahead and found a smaller size. So this one is a size for kids basketball. The black one that I had uh, that I showed a little bit earlier, uh, that is the, uh, I guess the normal size, the one that nor, uh, adults use. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so it's not gonna fit. So a size four just fits right into the hoop, um, but it won't go all the way just because the net itself uh, catches it. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, like uh, just make sure you get a right size. Otherwise, if not, um, if you end up buying your own, it'll come with a ball itself. All right guys, so before we do anything, you wanna make sure your ball is clean. Uh, so this one I actually found at the thrift shop, so I was fortunate to find this size. For some reason, this is really hard to find. But anyways, found it. And then, the next thing you want to do is have all your equipment ready. So you're going to get some scissors or an X-Acto knife and something to drill in. So I actually got a, a drill that we're going to use uh, just to create some drainage holes if you wish. Um, and In this case, I'm going to make some drainage holes. Uh, so, first thing you're going to do is you want to make sure you have the size of a pot you want to do to cut the, to cut this in. I think I'm going to use a 6 inch. I think it's a 6 inch. Uh, so, you're just going to place it on top. Alright, and then you're going to just trace a line. So, what I did is I, did, I went right ahead and there you go. We got And then... What you want to do next is just to cut it, okay? So while I am doing that, I'm going to use a drill and just go right away. So be careful with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just find a little section here. Uh, what was my first plant that I had for, uh, what was my first plant? And how long have I had it? And um, I brought this up before, but the first plant that I ever had for myself uh, was a snake plant. I think that's like everyone's first ever plant, especially um, if you ever receive the plant for the first time um, or you go out and ask like you want to start with, uh, you, you want to start keeping a plant and you're not sure what to start off with because you know you're scared of like not taking care of it. I can honestly say the snake plant was the best choice um, and also a plant that was easy for me to take care of. Uh, so I got that as the first plant and that was um, probably since March, April of this year. And since then it's grown, grown pretty tall now. So I got a really big plant, like I didn't, like as much as I like the like one leaf type of thing like this one here, um, I like, I'm a little bit more bushy and I wanted something that's very big and I guess 
very like first thing you see uh, first thing you look at so I got a snake plant it's uh, black and yellow uh, sorry black and gold I think um, I don't know the actual name of it but that was my first plant and since then it's growing now so that's like what April, May, June, July, August now. Nine, mo nine, nine months now? Almost a year. Not really almost a year. Three more months till a year. One year old. Um, so yeah, that's my first ever plant. My first ever plant in the home, in, in, at home, is this point, uh, one, an orchid. We had that for, I don't even know how long I had that, or in the house. Um, and that was probably, I want to say like 10 years old. It, it, it still looks the same. If anything, it keeps growing up the uh, stems for flowering, but we always trim it out just because it, it's just going out of control. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it's an orchid. <laughs> Here we are, I just trimmed it out, really easy. Okay, um, and what you're, we're gonna do is just double check the size and if it fits. Okay, there you go, okay. Um, I'm gonna trim just a little bit more because I want this thing to be right to the edge. And then what we're gonna do from there is we're gonna super glue this, okay? So what I like to do with this, and I always like to glue in and create this as in one whole pot as opposed to be like this, this. Like you can do it this way, it's just, um, what I like to do is have something to carry on because let's just say I have this size and for some reason, I'm not ready to have a the size of this plant. I want this thing in. So at least, even though it's like a little bit bigger, um, at least I could put smaller pots in there, and it'll still be fine. Okay. Um, so yeah. So I'm just gonna trim this guy out, and then I'll answer the next question. Um, so knowing that plants have different families, uh, what uh, family of plants would I never get? Uh, so I'm not like, I don't know everything, but there's certain things that I don't, uh, certain type of plants that I don't uh, you know, go to a nursery and that's the first thing I look at. Um, so that would be like cactuses, I'm not a huge fan of that. Succulents, I think the reason why is just, they're so small. And um, they're, I don't know, it's just not very attractive to me. And like I've seen stuff online where you see like succulents, they like, they look almost like candy-like. And I guess that looks pretty great. Um, but I mean, for me, I'm into like leaves. Like I'm into like foliage, I'm into, uh, like vine, things vining like that's that's the type of things I like like things that are vining or th like plants that are uh, just interesting form of leaves is like my things that I'm moving towards uh, especially if they're like I'm not into variegation but I can see why um, people are into it um, but I like like the silvery type of things like uh, the silver sword it over there but um, that was like my first ever type of plant that I was looking for I guess you could say that was first on my wish list ever um, the other one that I, w I liked a lot were um, that intrigued me were like just plants with uh, interesting names so um, one of them like I'm just drawing a blank right now but like Oh yeah, okay, so like, for example, my Philodendron uh, 69686, I thought that was a pretty crazy name, like, and just hearing the history of how that came up, um, it just sparked my interest to get one, uh, so that's one of the things I like. Um, but yeah, going back to the question, like, what type of families I wouldn't get, I guess it would be like succulents and cacti. Um, don't know the actual term and not like the correct family name for it. Um, but uh, I'm not into flowering plants. Like I know all plants flower, but like, um, so for example, like I'm st I, the only exception would be orchids, but right now like it's just it's still on the back burner. 
but I, I'm not into plants that have that are known for their flowering. Um, just because like I find flowering just depending on what it is, but I find that the only time flowering happens if you give it the right conditions. And some uh, flowering plants, for example, like the Christmas cactus, like that only flowers during the holidays, hence why the name. Christmas cactus or like the Thanksgiving one or the Easter like those ones only flower during those type of seasons and I mean it's great it's just like for me it's like I want to see it every day kind of thing, right? but, I mean the one exception is also not just orchids but the uh, Hoyas like but with that one the leaves itself the foliage of it is actually still like I'm okay with and then the flowering is like a bonus for me and also like they're really easy to take care of so it's like a whole win-win like they, they wind like crazy they, there's a bunch of leaves in there um, and yeah there's like just a huge variety so for like if you like the flowering but you also want something that looks great without the flowering I would definitely say the Hoya is, um, is definitely something you should look at Someone asked about my gains. Uh, gains are steady. Pandemic sucks because I'm very used to having a full functioning gym. Um, I have my own setup, but it's just not the same. But I am surviving, so that's that. Um, and then, last question I have is the benefits of propagating in sphag sphagnum moss versus water. So. I find different plants do well with different conditions when it comes to propagating. Um, but when it comes to propagating or just rooting stuff, the one thing you want is to make sure they're able to root. Uh, so, and also you want to make sure they're in proper conditions. So humidity and the heat, I think. Is, so you want to treat your propagating almost like um, like you're seeding. You're growing from a seed, and most. Uh, germinating process requires a little bit of heat and moisture so with that being said like most plants do well in both I find the most safest way from preventing root rot or just uh, just rotting from uh, propagating to be very successful um, I find it very easier very easy to do it in sphagnum moss uh, just because it's just uh, constant moisture not just from the actual moss but um, just in the environment that I put it in. So I actually use a propagation box uh, with sphagnum moss and a little bit of a water tray and just to create a greenhouse effect. Uh, I find that super beneficial for a lot of tropical plants that you're propagating. Um, not even just tropical plants, like just like any plants really. Anything with a node, really. Uh, with water, I know uh, pothos do really well in uh, water uh, so I usually do that sometimes if I like the leaf itself for what it is I, and while I'm propagating I will just put in water because I'll just have it in a nice little container uh, to put it in uh, but otherwise I, I'm at the point where I just want to I want something to be rooting fast and I want to get an abundance of it and the easiest for me, easiest and most effective for me right now is um, with sphagnum moss. So benefits of sphagnum moss is it's um, it gets the uh, it gets the roots going a little bit more safely um, and it doesn't really have a bigger chance of root rot. Um, bad side about it is it's in a box so if you don't have a lot of space or um, you like to look at your plants like that's it's, it's such an eyesore like right now mine's in a Tupperware <laughs> so I really don't care as long as it's it's working um, whereas water like it, aesthetically it can look nice so if you're into that type of stuff then wa um, propagating in water is like the best way um, downside not all propagating uh, not all propagating in water uh, is successful and sometimes it takes longer uh, so that's that's just that so, it's a hit or miss like you can do both I don't see why not okay uh, so that's it with the questions if you guys have any more uh, let me know you can always just uh, link in the 
on Instagram. We'll talk about the bottom. Oh. We're here. Okay, uh, we're gonna test out. I just trimmed it. And we're going to just see if it fits right in. Okay. So it can go a little bit more. I'm just gonna trim a little bit more. So what's nice about this is we're gonna glue it in. So that way the pot itself is just like that. Okay. Um, now, if you're going to, like for me, like I'm gonna use a nursery pot um, as a base for this thing. So now this thing um, has like one half of a drainage hole, but because it's hollow in here, we need to just make sure that if you're going to, if I'm going to use this as the actual pot itself, this needs some drainage holes. So I'm going to drill the bottom with a couple of few holes in there. All right, so I'm just warning you guys, using a drill is probably not the best idea, uh, but I thought it would be easier for me to just puncture through the basketball, but I realized it was a lot difficult than I anticipated. You've been warned. Don't use it. If you have to, use something else. That was a bit of a struggle, but it is done. We're going to glue this guy right on, and we are pretty much done. So we got a little bit of holes there. I didn't put too much. I'm gonna do a little bit more later on. I didn't realize the struggle it is to drill uh, some holes in here. I'm probably just gonna cut the holes a little bit more wider so the water can come out. But otherwise, this is basically done, okay? So that is uh, that, okay? So really simple, you just need a ball, a pot of size of choice, um, something to cut it with, and presto, you are done, so. Guys, I really enjoyed making this one here. As you can tell, it came out really well. I hope you guys also do something like this. I'd love to see it, um, but yeah. Feel free to comment, give a like, and I would love to see you guys subscribe. Um, and I'm hoping to see you guys in my next video. Thank you.